Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Imaginings. It is going to be a heavy month for RuneQuest on the channel because Chaosium keeps releasing awesome RuneQuest products. And this one in particular caught my eye because once again we are getting a supplement here that is kind of defying the general convention of the hobby in a good way and i'll explain that here shortly but before i do that i just want to point out a couple of things that is probably long overdue on the channel one this is a sponsored video and so this pdf was sent to me by chaosium i mean that's not new or anything but i feel like i need to explicitly state to y'all that just because i'm showing off a pdf it does not mean that a physical book is not coming for any PDFs that I'm showing. The physical books are coming. Like on every video that I've produced recently that takes you on a tour of the PDF, I seem to be getting these comments that people think that the books aren't coming, and they are, okay? Uh, obviously, Chaosium has this uh, plan, like many game companies, where they are releasing the PDF, you can purchase the PDF and then get the cost off of the PDF when you purchase the uh, hardcover book when this releases. And so RuneQuest Weapons and Equipment is coming in hardcover. It's just going to be sometime, you know, during the first half of 2022. But since I have the PDF on hand, I don't just want to sit on PDFs anymore. I want to give you a little taste of what's going on, especially because, as I mentioned before, this supplement is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the word correcting, a huge problem that I've had with the role-playing game industry since I've been in it, basically, since the beginning. Um, you know, all the way back in the early 90s, uh, when I was playing AD&D 2nd Edition, there's an aspect of production or sales or marketing that a lot of RPG companies do that has really bothered me personally. Once again, you can like whatever you like, but these tend to be supplements that I would normally stay away from. And the reason is, is because a lot of these weapons and equipment guides that exist for role-playing games are, in my opinion, low on lore and setting and heavy on statistics. That isn't always the case, but there are many instances that I can recall for many games where I'll pick up a weapons and equipment guide and it's basically, we will give you some more numbers to do number things with in the game because we know you like number things and want to use numbers to number other things. You know, and, and that's not what attracts me to role-playing. I'm far more into characterization and myth and setting and culture and RuneQuest is those things. It's very different from most other fantasy role-playing games in that regard and it's part of the reason why I've lashed onto it so hard here on the channel with the release of the new supplements and I've also been collecting the old supplements. I've also been collecting some of uh, Greg Stafford's uh, earlier works uh, that that he published. Anyway, let's get to the supplement at hand, RuneQuest Weapons and Equipment, which was just released by Chaosium in PDF format. So first off, beautiful cover piece for this supplement that really gets at what this supplement is about. So here we have a holistic scene in which we have people representing a wide variety of different trades. We have somebody dealing with some severely damaged armor and a shirt underneath. We have uh, what looks like a priest or a priestess, perhaps of Lank or Mai, covering her jaw with a uh, uh, classic RuneQuest uh, bejeweled uh, jaw cover. We have the lovely tattoos that are uh, an aspect of representing the runes in Glorantha. And so I think that this is a really good example of a typical scene that shows the depth of this as a fantasy role-playing game, that this arms and equipment guide is not just about giving you bigger numbers so that you can bigger number things to death, because that also is not what RuneQuest is about at all. Uh, RuneQuest is uh, not a traditional leveling system game. Um, you have the opportunity to uh, increase skills and increase passions, uh, but and perhaps increase POW and, and some other mechanics, but this isn't like you will always have whatever hit points you start with, okay, in the game. 
uh, which is a feature of many Chaosium games and something that I like about Chaosium as a role-playing game company because it's less about chugging through something else's hit points before yours run out and more about being strategic and tactical. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be strategic and tactical in those other games, but frankly, I've played hundreds of sessions of other games, and they're pretty much all about you just whacking down a pool of hit points faster than your opponent can whack yours down. Um, I think that there's a lot of illusion in combat in role-playing games, and people think that they're doing something that different than they actually are. Anyway, let's talk about the supplement, though, because what this supplement is doing is presenting a living, breathing culture, which is what Glorantha is, which is what makes it awesome. And so what I wanted to do, of course, is to show you the table of contents right off the bat. But then I also want to highlight one chapter that will give you uh, an idea of you know what what's going on with this book and what sets this book very much apart as not just an options book so to speak but also a culture book is really what I think that this is and if you are in a largely culture based role playing game like RuneQuest role playing in Glorantha understanding ways to bring culture into your game in something that is tangible that you can visualize and smell and hear and taste, uh, I think can only support the game. So, you know, if, if you wanna go ahead and pause the video and look at the aspects here of the table of contents, uh, feel free to do so. I'm gonna highlight the chapter, A Bronze Age World, because I think that it does a really good example of not only dispelling some misconceptions about RuneQuest, certainly misconceptions that I had before I picked up this supplement, but also really adds a richness to what one would expect on uh, in a game that is about a culture that is trying to leverage metals and metal alloys <clears throat> as key features of the culture. So I'll just scroll down a little bit more, you know, feel free to pause and check out this is one of my favorite headers, beasts, meat beasts. Heck, heck yes, meat beasts. Okay. Uh, beasts are a huge part of culture in Glorantha. I, I mean, um, wow, how many cows and horses you have are a huge part of being a Sardarite. And a lot of the adventures in RuneQuest are about protecting your herd, um, finding lost aspects of a herd, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, interesting things on hirelings and services. Other things that I just want to point out while we're here is that I think that the slavery section is really, really well done and answers some questions that I had early on about the role of slavery in RuneQuest, that it is not about uh, historical human slavery. Um, it is more about indebtedness uh, than anything, and you can uh, buy your way out of slavery in RuneQuest. Um, it is more uh, of an interaction between tribes than it is between uh, an individual who is indebted to someone versus not. Um, real historical human slavery is way more terrible, <laughs> uh, to put it mildly. Um, and so I highly recommend that anybody who gets the supplement read the slavery section because it does a really good job of highlighting what makes this different from real historical savory in human civilization. And then I also want to point out that the, under this exotic items section, there is a really, I, I mean, it's only a couple pages long, but it answered every question that I had about magic crystals in the game, because there are many instances, especially on pregens, where they talk about pow crystals or crystals that are, uh, storing spirit points and i have been struggling to understand you know i that that mechanic is in the core book but uh, i don't think that the core book does a great job of explaining under what conditions do you have magic crystals and and why do they seem like they're ubiquitous or something that the individuals seek out etc and so this magic crystal section for me as a new player is another section that i think is a really good thing to look at so let's go ahead now and skip ahead to a bronze age world and that is way too small so we are gonna do this there we go and it starts off with a section here just on gloranthan metals and what makes gloranthan metals different from earthly metals, because it is made very explicit here at the start that Glorantha is not our own earth. 
and the metals called bronze, iron, gold are analogs of earthly metals. You know, one thing right off the bat is that you look at the prices of gold and the prices of iron here. Iron is a very valuable metal in Glorantha. Uh, it's it's not cheap. <laughs> 700 um, uh, wheels for, uh, or uh, yeah, wheels for price per point of encumbrance of it. And uh, examples are iron is very damaging to elves in this game. And of course, RuneQuest has natural elves that they look like trees and shrubberies. And uh, they have a very different uh, character than classic Middle Age fantasy elves. They all have individual names. This is a Bronze Age setting, and bronze, of course, being a very uh, significant metal. And then it continues on with a description of each of these metals or metal alloys where they're found. Um, there's a whole sidebar here on what is bronze and what makes bronze an important metal and how you can obtain it and the different methods for uh, uh, melting it together uh, for the purposes of um, making the alloy. And in Glorantha, bronze can also be straight up found out of the ground. Um, now, Notice here for iron, most difficult metal to work and the techniques of working it are the secrets of the dwarfs and such cults as the third eye blue. It has supernatural properties even when left unenchanted and when enchanted and it continues in the next section. There's also this section here, this very attractive uh, page with the, I really like the blue sidebars here, the Medal of Akos. The following is a first age document written by the Shesnegi Sorcerer Prince Bertalor late Duke of Fromowal, inserts by a late commentator, the early god learner Tojorinor of Iswafel, are indicated with italics. And so uh, I really like these first person documents that they put here. And then there's also a nice little display of, you know, what the ingots look like, what the um, finished pieces might look like in the realm of Glorantha. And that's the other thing, the compliment that I get to give in this book is that so many arms and equipment books in role-playing games are basically an excuse for stat blocks that people can use, <laughs> you know, to influence their numbers. Honestly, I think that a lot of people would maybe be a lot happier if they were playing video games rather than playing role-playing games, but you know, to each their own. It's not my cup of tea. If it's yours, I support you, okay? Um, so uh, what this book does really, really well is there are beautiful pictures throughout showcasing all of the different styles of shields that are featured in the supplement, the different styles of weapons, the different styles of armors and helmets. And so that's uh, something that is uh, worth um, looking out. We also have a sidebar here of Gloranthan cults and uh, which cults have a particular enchant metal spell so that you have to go to the appropriate uh, temple in order to enchant a metal of your choice and there are very few cults that enchant multiple metals and we're continuing on with information uh, here we have a new rune spell enchant metal um, yeah we move on in this section this isn't just about metals of course there's also information about pottery how to make pottery prices for uh, different types of fired pottery could definitely see a character using uh, potted or painted pottery as a skill to uh, have a trade in the game. Information on spinning weaving, different fuels that are used in Glorantha. And then we end the chapter with this beautiful sketch art of what looks like a trade exchange happening between some people. And then the next section is uh, common goods. So I just wanted to showcase this chapter for you because, you know, I have a policy, which is an important policy to not showcase an entire book uh, to people, especially not in PDF uh, fashion. And so I hope you enjoyed this overview of a Bronze Age, Bronze Age world for the weapons and equipment supplement for RuneQuest. Once again, the highlight for me is that this is really showcasing the culture and religion and spirituality and politics and complexity of this world 
which is a highlight of RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. I think the next video that I'm going to do, because, you know, we're all, we can all get kind of exhausted during the holiday season, is that I think I'm just going to play through Solo Quest from the RuneQuest uh, starter, because I've only played through it once, and I think that that would be a fun thing for people to see on the channel, um, because a lot of people are going to be getting RuneQuest starter sets for the holidays, and I think that it's important, you know, to sort of... Uh, you know, do some comparisons after people play it once, and how did different people, you know, make decisions under these different circumstances. RuneQuest is an example of a role-playing game where it is often very difficult to figure out what the right choice is in a particular situation, which is another reason why I like it over typical fantasy role-playing games. Typical fantasy role-playing games basically take whatever the individual's conception is of, you know, what's fair, what's appropriate behavior in a culture, and just skins it over whatever the role-playing game is. You cannot get away with that in RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. Um, the cultural rules that uh, different groups have in Glorantha can be very, very different from what we would consider to be cultural norms, and things that are obvious answers to individuals playing games are not that obvious of an answer in Glorantha, and you basically have to learn how Glorantha works through role playing, which I just think is a it is a super fun way to role play because it is fantasy role playing where you truly have to learn the culture as you go along, and that's something that has always really impressed me about the game. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this overview of RuneQuest weapons and equipment. This book is available as a PDF at Chaosium.com, and remember, if you purchase the PDF from Chaosium.com, they will give you the cost of the PDF off of the physical book when it becomes available sometime in 2022. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.